I'm Wayson Firebird. We're at the New South Wales Hot Rod and Custom Auto Expo. I'm Wayson Firebird. Today we're on our way to the Hot Rod and Custom Auto Expo at Rose Hill Gardens Racecourse outside of Sydney. Look at that Honda K van thing. Oh, that's so cool. I don't even know what it is. Oh, oh, oh we're in West Connex and we didn't follow the procedures for entering West Connex. Before you enter West Connex, tell your friends and family when you will be entering and when you expect to be back. And never go into West Connex alone. Always take a buddy. You're not allowed to turn around in West Connex. It's one of the scariest things. No matter what happens, no matter what challenges you face, like there could be like a bomb up there, or there could be like a knight with a lance, or there could be like, I don't know, like like a, a snake or something. Yes, I just activated the, the windshield wipers. I've been in the USA, okay, they're supposed to be turn signal. Anyway, you have to face whatever is in front of you in West Connex. You have no choice. There is no turning back. I wanted to talk about storytelling today because storytelling is the most important skill that you are never taught. Every sentence you speak or write is a story. Think of it, subject, predicate. Subject is the, the person or the thing that's, that's doing something and the predicate is what they did. So it's like beginning and end. It's like, I am driving. Subject, predicate, story. I just told you a story. It's a little bit of a boring story, but every sentence is a story. If you put enough sentences together, you can get an interesting story out of it. The way storytelling works is stuff happens in the world and then you look back on it and you filter what's interesting from what is not interesting and then you just tell the interesting parts. It's so nice to be back in Australia. We've been in the US for a month. Two door Ford Focus or Fiesta. Two door Ford hatchback. We didn't get any of those. Not, I mean, not, maybe in the 80s. If you were watching this from anywhere else in the world besides Australia, come to Australia now. These Utes are going away. Australia's uniqueness is going away. The, the American car market and the Australian car market are becoming very similar. Big pickup trucks are starting to roll the roads in Australia. There you go, a big pickup truck. And all the Australian car makers are gone. U.S. car makers aren't doing that well. Most cars are being imported from Korea, Japan now. Oh yes, and in automotive news, I've been saying that Chinese cars are coming to the U.S. They aren't anymore because they have created a tariff on Chinese cars of 100%. That means that China has to manufacture a car for half the price of everybody else in order to charge the same price they've effectively banned Chinese cars from coming to the U.S. 50s Holden Special really is like a, a 56 Chevy, only just a little bit smaller. Here's the Chevy, and uh, you know, if we could park that next to the Holden, we could get an idea that's like very similar car, just a little smaller. Look, Camaros! We just saw a bunch of these. Camaros, Camaros, Camaros. You see them at every car show. I'm actually not going to talk about the Camaros. We, we should go on to something else. Okay, this is cute. I love how small this one is. I love small cars in general. They're just so much more practical. Chevy Chevelle. See him at every car show. Like, I really love these, but they're super common at every car show you go to in the USA. But yeah, then you come to Australia, it's like, I feel like I haven't seen one of these in a few years. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, Ford Econoline van. No, there's no carpeting on the interior, but it's got the right wheels and the right side pipes. Okay, my van is up and running, by the way. I didn't actually start it up, but I visited it in Texas. This is the van. It is now running. It's nice to see you actually in a happy condition with cool wheels again. This one has great patina. I'm not so sure. Uh, okay, well, 
There's a little surprise under the hood. It's a big surprise, actually. This is really, really clean under here. It's delightful, the contrast between how clean this is and how, how dirty the rest of it is. Let's check out the interior. The interior is clean as well. They just left the patina and they fixed everything else. And it's got a Toyota motor in it. It's got a Turbo 1JZ in it. Oh, I, I like this Holden. Holden Racing Team Optimized GTSR. Can I open the door up and try to unlock? What's that? Can I open the door up and try to unlock? Oh, is it yours? Or are you just telling me I can open someone else's car up? Mate, I've got a more car down there. Look, it's a cockatoo. <laughs> Two fifteen I Hydra track. Look at this green thing over here. I love the color. This to me looks like it was the 1940s and the world was at war. But young Billy was only 15 and he couldn't join the army, so he spent the war hot rodding instead. Very cool that I think this is too many louvers. Maybe it gets really hot in there. Well, these louvers don't even bring in or let out any air, not that you would need to from your bed anyway, but there's another piece of metal on the other side, so too many louvers. Too many louvers, too many louvers, too many louvers. Okay, this is not a very functional uh, tailgate here, guys. When you say I'm extra. Valiant yeah. wagon. Well, I just call it. I just Green, green everywhere. Love those wheels. They're, they're complaining about my commentary. They didn't appreciate my commentary on the tailgate. Okay, the big thing is, and I'll say it a million times, is that you must love the thing you love. And if you love it, then just keep on loving it. And don't pay any attention to what I say. I'm just saying what I think. People might agree with me, they might not. But what fun would it be if I held back my thoughts? If I don't get someone threatening to kill me by the end of the car show, then why are we here? I'm not a fighter, I'm a lover of cars and a commenter upon cars and sometimes a hater of cars. And I'm going to say the things that I think and feel because I'm a storyteller. The fact is, when you bring your car to a car show, oh, it's Bruce! Hello, Bruce! Howdy. Good to see you, sir. I like your work. I've been seeing all of your photos. I, 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 I would not bet me in the Why not? Yeah. You should expect me at every car show. Yeah. I expect you at every car show. Yeah. But yeah, when I'm not in the country, I get to look at your photos and I get to see all the stuff I'm missing. The fact is, when you bring your car to a car show, you open your car up to criticism. And when you make a YouTube video about a car show, you open yourself up to criticism. So feel free to mention in the comments what a jerk you think I am. Some people on YouTube, they say, oh, they told me I wasn't allowed to film there, so that kind of ruined my whole day. Or they'll be like, I'm out in public and I feel weird talking to a camera. If you're on YouTube, you have to get over those two things as quickly as you can. 
Just go out in the world, make a fool of yourself, offend people, and break the rules. If everything you say is a story, that means when you're in a job interview, you're telling a story. Are you a good storyteller? If so, you'll get the job. If you're trying to get someone to change their mind, are you a good storyteller? If so, you'll probably succeed, even if you're trying to make friends. We like to think that relationships are not transactional. We like to believe in unconditional love, but if you were not interesting, if you're not a good storyteller, it's gonna be a bit harder to make friends, too. These colors are great. Green with bronze wheels and bronze accessories. The thing is, when I see a car like this, it just makes me want to drive it so badly. And I hope somebody does drive it occasionally. It's really sad when a show car is made for shows, it's never driven, and then at some point it's forgotten, and then you find it in a field rusting away, and it still only has a couple thousand miles on it. That's pretty much the saddest thing I can imagine. It's a gorgeous Jeep thing. It's got a screen in it though. Man, the reason I get into an old car is I want to get away from screens. So you got here, we weren't sure if you want to get here, I saw you put, oh, I'll try and get where you are. Yeah, well, I mean, I figure if you guys can make the effort to get here, yeah, then yeah, I should make the effort the country, to get here. Yeah. We usually talk to you guys in Perth, usually yes, at, at yes. Pox Eclipse. Pox. What's the name of your shop? Armadale Auto Parts. Armadale Auto Parts. And then we just put Hot Rod Shop. Hot Rod Shop. Yeah. And you guys got a YouTube channel. Yeah, too. we got a YouTube channel. And you actually work on cars. Yeah. Which, yeah. see, that's quality content. Unlike my content where I just talk about cars. But you guys are here promoting, oh my goodness, I've been to this place. Yeah. Bob's Big Boy. We just ate here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah. did a video there. Bob's Big Boy, original hamburgers. So you guys do tours of the USA? Yes. What do you guys visit when you go there? We try and center the two week trip around a big event like a good guys or a grand national rose to show or seamer or something like that you but you did seamer well i went to the outside yes i went to the outside of SEMA. we're outside SEMA. we can't get into SEMA, right but you guys can i think get people into the inside of yes we can you have a skill you have your techniques yeah you need special privileges to get into SEMA, but you do they might be able to work it out for you guys so we did route 66 and it's the first time i had driven all of route 66 and they are doing the 100th anniversary of route 66 in 2026 and it's also the 250th anniversary of the United States of America oh, in 2026. Okay, okay. So I am already planning for this. Yes. I okay. have dreams and plans. Yeah. Yeah, you guys should do it. Have you ever driven all of Route 66? Not the whole lot. Yeah. I've done a bit. One day. Well, well one, one day, day should be two years from now. Like if, yeah. if you have been considering driving Route 66, do it in 2026. Yeah. Maybe we should. Yeah, I think you should. Yeah, I'm glad I mean, you told us. I'm trying you. to get a bunch of people together yeah. on board to have a giant caravan of people mm -hmm. that are all yeah. celebrating this together. And one of the biggest parts of storytelling, or maybe the biggest part of storytelling, is identifying a story worth telling. I think the 100th anniversary of Route 66 and 250th anniversary of the USA coinciding in the same year, I think that's a story worth telling. I gotta say that the cars in here are pretty much beyond reproach. There are some weird taste choices maybe, but it's hard to criticize anything in here. This is very tastefully modded. It's almost exactly as it would have looked back in the day, but then a couple little things here and there, like the slotted brake rotors, you know? This one is going to need some explanation. Give me a moment. Well, the plaque is not very helpful. It doesn't say what it was made out of in the first place. It's a miniature big truck made out of a pickup truck from some era in human history. I'm not really sure which.
I'm having a vehicle painted right now, my weird buggy thing. We're painting it 70s Volkswagen orange, something close to that, with brown metal flake stripe and a yellow metal flake stripe. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. This appears to be a slowly developing tradition of taking a boring 80s car and turning it into a lowrider. I mean, to a lot of young people, this is an old car, I guess, but there were so many of these back in the day and so few people look fondly back on these cars. But now they've done something to turn it into something special. Another boring 80s or early 90s car that's been transformed into something special and interesting. And I guess if you didn't get these in Australia, then you're going to find it even more interesting. Are they better? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Gorgeous colors of silver and gold and textures in the paint. Got like the kind of gold leaf with them engine turn finish and then metal flake and silver and charcoal interspersed with the wider just kind of grayish area it does have a little bit of flake in it too just really tasteful but at the same time very artistic this one's super cute it has flames that are kind of cartoony looking almost they're not your typical masterful flames that are painted by a pinstriper. It's more like someone who's just learning or someone who's more into drawing cartoony pictures. But it, it gives it a lot more character. Like, I really like it just the way it is. I wouldn't change it at all. Wow, the rod is your dad. Oh, when I was looking at motorcycles at Picnic at Hanging Rock, people said, oh, well, obviously you have no taste in motorcycles because you picked the craziest, fanciest, shiniest, sparkliest motorcycle at your favorite. Well, that's because, yes, I'm not riding it. For me, they're just sculptures. I'm not going to ride this. And I'm not going to ride that one either, but it's gorgeous. I'm not going to ride that. I'm definitely not going to ride that one. British will be in the past that we do not ride motorcycles. Oh, but look at this. Okay, I think this is my winner among the motorcycles. And again, not for rideability purposes, just for lookability purposes. I'm quite able to look at that and enjoy it. Well, that one's that one's dragging its exhaust pipes on the ground. That's just, that is just not very practical. This motorcycle is clearly designed to only be ridden on carpets. Gorgeous painted and pinstriped skateboards. They're done as a demonstration, but I seriously want one of these to ride. That one there. So nice. Another way to demonstrate your skills or to work on your skills is to build miniature bikes or those miniature kitty cars for kids to ride around in. It lets you hone your skills on a smaller scale and mistakes aren't going to be as expensive. I didn't even notice this one. He just pointed out that they're sharing the same wheel. It's conjoined twin bikes. pickup truck. I don't, I don't feel like I've ever even seen a Mercury pickup truck before. With tail lights. I don't know if that's period correct or not, but the fact that I, I'm wondering whether it's period correct or not indicates that they were done very tastefully. I'm really just waiting to see a hot ride that has louvers all the way down the doors and the sides and the top and the back. Like louvers end to end 100%. I would argue that these are plausible louvers because they are all to remove heat from the engine, or at least plausibly, possibly, to remove heat from the engine. These would serve to remove heat from the cabin, but 
as long as you're moving, you'll be fine. If you stop, you're gonna get rained on. It's the hardcore Japanese hot rodders. They came all the way from Japan. I think they have a better aftermarket in Japan than they have in the US and Australia. Look at this. Massive selection. We found the Camaro and Firebird section. Oh, oh, oh yes, yes. This is one of the best colors of Trans Ams you could get. It's Martinique Blue. It's one of the top three colors for Firebirds. Stellar Blue, Martinique Blue, and then there's Carousel Red also looks really good. It's not really red, it's kind of orangey. That's why I picked it. Yeah. Because every bastard's got a black one. Right. <laughs> I have a Stellar Blue 1975, and that's the same thing. I didn't want a black one. I didn't want to be like, oh, Smokey and the Bandit. I thought it'd be more cool to have something unique. And if you want a piece of trivia, you want to tell a 78 Firebird from a 77 Firebird. 78 has the crisscross curl. 77 has honeycomb curl. It's a 90s Camaro. It's, we see them at every car show. I do. Australia loves their Mazdas. I love it too. I just, it's it's just so, so weird. I don't think you would see this at an American car show, unless it were a Mazda car show or a Japanese car show. It's not your typical hot rod, at least not in the USA. Mazda RX-3. They really care about their Mazda RX-3. They did it up nice. Yanko was a dealer that sold Camaros and they customized them as well. And they became so famous that everybody wanted a Yanko and there were only so many to go around. So now they reproduce the stickers. It's probably not actually sold from the Yanko dealership. Look at this beauty. I love the combination of that olive drab and brown leather interior. It's just so tasteful. Okay, I, I mean, I do own a car that is British racing green with a tan leather interior, so I might be a bit biased. Yeah, I guess if you wait long enough, any car that seemed boring at the time can become a classic and it can be loved and it can be customized and beautified. A lot of car people have this feeling that there might have been a cutoff there somewhere where cars would no longer be loved anymore after that point. One thing that happened is the steel got so thin that you couldn't work it anymore. So if you couldn't buy a new panel, you couldn't fix the car. And then another crossover point we're about to enter is that electric cars are a whole different paradigm of vehicular motion. and. Are electric cars going to be nostalgic someday? I guess, sure. Are they going to be easy to work on? I don't, I don't know. There's all kinds of computers in them now. It would be pretty cool to teleport 50 years into the future and see what everybody is nostalgic for. There will never be another car maker that makes cars in Australia unless they're doing it on a very small scale or unless they're revolutionary in some way, like Tesla was in the US. We thought there'd never be another car maker in the US, but Tesla came out of nowhere. So it's possible something like that could happen with Australia. But the odds are very good that there will never be another car maker that is completely based in Australia, designed and manufactured in Australia. So you should make an effort to take care of your Australian made cars. Well, I found the Ford Surferu Ute. I am looking for this car in real life. If you know anybody who has one of these, it's orange, it's a ute, it has crazy spoilers on it. I'm about ready to give up. I may just have to purchase this one. So they actually make these molds themselves. Like, they make these cars. It's so cool. Uh, 30, almost 38 years. 38 years? Yeah. We're doing it for 38 years. Yeah. And it costs $25,000 to make a mold. So the startup cost to do this is $25,000. I think I need to purchase this thing.
maybe the only surfer who I ever see. We've got sundowners. Thrifty Utes. Got the escort sundowner over here. A great color. It's a reasonable question. What is the mystique of Route 66? Sure, the United States controls the world's media and movies and television, so everyone has seen Route 66, but why is it so appealing even to people that aren't from the United States? I firmly believe it's because of the American dream, even if you're not from America. The American dream isn't just the American dream, it's just the dream. The dream that you can support yourself, the dream that maybe you could become rich someday doing what you love. And Route 66 meant the American dream. It meant expanding opportunities by going west when there were no opportunities in the east. Wait a minute. I don't think these were ever made in convertibles. Somebody's put a lot of work into this. See, I told a story to Craig and Alan, and it planted a seed in their head. And now they're gonna do a Route 66 tour in 2026. You don't change people's minds in an instant. It's by telling people a story that you plant that seed and over time they change their mind. It might take so long that they don't even remember who planted the seed. They might not give you credit for changing their mind. But I've done it before. It can take years, maybe even a decade or two. Look at this Studebaker pickup truck. Clearly been modified a bit actually. <laughs> So I know they look really good from the factory, but lightly and tastefully modified look even better. Excalibur. Like the thing we saw in New Zealand. Excalibur, 1986. They started building cars in back about 1965, um, roadster type models, and they slowly evolved every five years. They changed the design. Shut down in 1990. And this particular model I only built 215. Not only did they make these and manage to sell some of them to people, but someone brought one over to Australia. The mistake that I think a lot of YouTubers make is they fail to tell a story. Then again, maybe it's not a mistake because when you can only sum up your video in a thumbnail and a brief description, it's hard to sum up a story. It's easier to just sum up some little bit of spectacle. The best YouTube channels and television shows and movies are telling a story. I'm Wason Fiber. Thank you for inviting me into your home or onto your portable device. Have a good night. Thanks to Vash Kelly for the camera work. Life is beautiful. Remember, always be yourself. This car has pink wall tires. <laughs>